Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and today we're gonna to take a look at the updated Redfin housing market report and it will show us additional price decline and demand absolutely dropping off a cliff. But we should remember from last week's video that we can't completely trust organizations like Redfin and Zillow to give us the most accurate, transparent information. So I just wanna say before I really dig in here, guys, make sure you're doing your own research in your local housing market and also understand that generally value is created by reviewing comps or comparable homes, which is basically homes that have already sold in the subject properties subdivision. So never forget that guys, I want you to be empowered with your own ability to find a great deal. And I hope you guys are learning that. And if you guys can for the desire, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, shoot me a comment below. And either way, I really Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. The name of this week's report is Housing Market Update. Monthly housing cost hit all-time high, deterring would-be buyers. Now we'll take a look at what Redfin believes home buyers should know and what home sellers should know and what they believe is gonna happen moving forward. And some of this stuff, you guys, at least in my opinion, is absolutely bonkers and absolutely ridiculous. Now starting with what homeowners need to know. It's more expensive than ever to buy a home. The median monthly mortgage payment hit an all-time high of $2,632 during the four weeks ending September 10th. Although the weekly average mortgage rate has declined slightly from August to decade high, it's still sitting at above 7%. Prices are up too, increasing 4% year over year. And I hate how they write that, you guys, because they're talking once again, just like last year, about year over year price growth. But the reality is, is when we look at the week over week data, house prices are not going up. House prices are going down once again. In fact, we're a roughly 2% off peak. Where's that at in this article? It's nowhere to be found guys. Now let's see what they want home sellers to know. Prices continue to rise because inventory is so low, posting one of its biggest declines in 19 months this year. Week, but the reality is, guys, is months of supply has skyrocketed upward, and I'll show you guys that in the visualization of data. But again, they don't want us to know that. In much of the country, you're likely to get a fair price for your home. It will help if it's move-in ready and it's in a desirable neighborhood. But keep in mind that high prices, elevated rates, and the lack of inventory is sending some buyers to the sidelines. Mortgage purchase applications are at a three-decade low and are down 12% year over year. Now looking forward, here's what Redfin has to say. This week's CPI report shows that inflation came in a touch higher than anticipated, except in shelter, which is absolute runaway inflation, in my opinion. That doesn't change the expectation that the Fed is highly unlikely to hike interest rates next week, and that's true, but it does but it does make a rate hike in November or December appear more likely. That could mean mortgage rates stay high through the end of the year or rates could come down if economic data looks promising over the next few months. And by promising, I hope he means that home prices went down. Now taking a look at this week's leading indicator, starting at the daily average is sitting at 7.25% on the mortgage rates, but the weekly average is sitting at 7.12%. How many of you think that is, if we had elevated rates like this through home buying season in 2023, the bubble would not have got bigger? You guys, the fact that the bubble got bigger during this home buying season to me means that it's a higher likelihood of a even deeper pricing crash. We needed a reset in 2023 and instead of that, the bubble got bigger. Now, mortgage purchase applications are actually down 27% year over year. Redfin home buying demand is actually down a whopping almost double digits. It's down 9%. So we have the lowest home buying demand for September than we've had in over four years. These are all of the trends that we want to see that will eventually hit prices and cause a market meltdown. Internet homes for searches is also down 9% year over year. And look at how shady this information is. Now, first of all, the median sales price is down roughly $2,000 from last week, even though they're not gonna show it to us in the charts. 
they are not going to show us a downward trajectory in the home prices on their data visualization. And honestly, guys, I think that is highly manipulative. I am so disgusted that they edit, at least I believe that they edit the trajectory of the graphs to hide just how far home prices are declining. They decline sharply week over week. Do you remember last week how median asking price was only $1,000 off from median sales price? Look at the gap, you guys. They just gave us week over week an $8,000 gap from median asking price to median sales price. Again, you guys, I smell something fishy here. How did it go up $8,000 in one week? This is crazy to me. Taking a quick look at Houston, the median sales price going into September for Houston, according to Redfin, is 338,000, sitting at a negative 1% year over year. However, when we go to Rocket Homes, we see a median sales price of $315,000 for August at a decline of 4.8% year over year. And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because I'm frustrated because there are so many different data providers that show so many different data points being different from each other. It's very scary, you guys, and it's very frustrating. And that is why, even though we may not like this, realtors are incredibly important. But the thing is, is they need to step up. They need to do a better job, transparency, being forthcoming, understanding your job, using the data to find the deal, right? Because MLS access gives us the true picture of the housing market in our local areas. We cannot lean on Redfin. We cannot lean on Zillow. Now, let's move on to data visualization. Now, let's start at median sales price. And again, you guys, this went down roughly $2,000 week over week. Okay, and that's a four week rolling average of median sales price. And what I wanna show you guys is this is the trajectory week over week, this point to that point. And what we see here, again, you guys, let me zoom in on this, okay? What we see here is that point to that point shows, literally doesn't show any price decline. In fact, when we really look at it, it looks like prices went up, not down. And I'm telling you guys, remember, go to last week's house market update, go to my last video. Housing prices were 378 in change. House prices went down $2,000 again, week over week, and they don't show it here, you guys. Do you see what I'm saying? To me, this is data manipulation because where is the decline? Let me zoom out. So I just don't trust this data. Nevertheless, you guys, I think we're going to be down here when we end. Okay. And there's some economists that are saying we're going to be down one to 2% year over year. If we're down one to 2% year over year, you guys, we're going to be exactly where I've been saying that we're going to end this year on. If we end with any type of negative year over year decline in median sales price, that means everyone from about this point right here, which is middle of 2021, is going to be upside down in their houses. The difference is, is their payment, right? If you purchased in 2021 and you purchased in 2023, your payment's probably a thousand dollars difference. Nevertheless, you're upside down in your house if that happens. Now look at this suspicious set of data. This is median asking price. And again, you guys, this was only off by a thousand dollars. It's now off by eight thousand dollars. And look at the trajectory right here. You know what I think is going on here, you guys? I think that Redfin behind the scenes is flipping switches and pushing buttons and not using all of the MLS data. Understand that there's roughly 600 MLS databases. And honestly, you guys, all they have to do is stop collecting data from one or two of those databases to completely flip these numbers. And what just happened? They shut their data down for almost four weeks. I don't believe this for a second that median asking price shot up like that in the face of record unaffordability, demand going off a cliff. And you're saying median asking price went up like this. Come on, you guys, do you believe it? Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm crazy, but let me know what y'all think. Now, this one is a killer right here, guys. This is home buying housing payments, which is up 14% year over year. So up 14% year over year. This is unacceptable. I mean, and if we compare 2022 to 2021, look at the gap. The gap right now in unaffordability is absolutely overwhelming. In fact, I've heard different reports saying that we need to make 60 to 40 to 60% more income 
if they wanna stabilize these house prices. Again, if house prices are to normalize, right? Inflation is gonna to have to go back up probably eight, 9%, and we're all gonna to have to make 40 to 60% more money. So, okay, fine. Keep housing prices the same, but where's my 60% increase in wages? I haven't had that yet, have you? Also, despite what Glenn Kelman is saying, pending sales is actually still going down. We just heard a video. Uh, from this morning's live. And if you guys don't catch my lives, catch my morning lives. I try to start them at 8.45 a.m. Central Time. We have a great time there and we keep our fingers to the pulse of the housing market. And I also chapter those morning lives. So if you guys want to visit, uh, check that out. And I also try to put overwhelming consumer value. But nevertheless, you guys look at the trajectory. Sales are going down. And what we want to see is we want to see new listings of homes go up. And we've seen week over week that it is basically plateaued, which is good because as long as it's not going down, we should be okay. All right, guys, take a look at this beauty right here. And this is exactly, uh, exactly what we want to happen. I know it's taken a little while, but thank God we're here. You guys, we're sitting now finally at three months of inventory and look at the trajectory. That trajectory of months of supply is straight up. So again, even though Glenn is saying we're losing inventory, we're actually gaining supply. And it's the laws of supply and demand, right? Not inventory and demand, it's supply and demand. And right now, you guys, thank God, supply is going up. And if it keeps that trajectory, we won't have to wait much longer for enough inventory to crash prices. Now here's a fantastic set of data. These are listings that had price cuts. And you guys, if you really wanna know how many price cuts in, are going on in your metro area, go back to Redfin and search of the report for your actual metro area, because the reality is, is you're gonna see metro areas with 30 to 50% price cuts, literally going on right now. In my own market here in Houston, over 30% of the inventory has price cuts. You guys, again, go to your own metro area, type it in Redfin and see for yourself. Price cuts right now are skyrocketing. Another beautiful thing. This is massive. Redfin home buying demand is down almost double digits, 9% year over year. Talk about a frustrating situation. I mean, how much consumer spending happened over the last five months? Absolutely ridiculous. But again, we, are, we have a new four year low, you guys. And we're, again, way lower than we were last year. This is absolutely good because we have inventory going up. We have demand going down. We have prices going down. This is exactly what we want. If you're in the camp of affordable housing coming back to America, which I am definitely in. And again, you guys, even if we keep the same amount of inventory, prices will naturally go down because they have not been built on sustainable fundamentals like price to earning ratio or payment to income ratio or equity growth, matching wage growth and things of that nature. And again, you guys, you know, these are just my opinions. I have the information linked in my description. I understand that every market is different. In fact, it's so different within big metro areas. There's additional markets that are called subdivisions. Don't forget that. Remember, you want to review a subject property's subdivision to understand the true value of that home. And other than that, guys, I really hope you guys got some new value, insights, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck, and I hope you win.